Hey, it's James here. And for today's video, we're gonna do something a little different. I am going to give the spotlight to top e-bass guitar coach, Freddie Draper. Freddie is gonna take you through five legendary pick or plectrum bass lines that you must know. This is a two part series and I'm gonna leave you with part one right now. If you love what you're seeing today and think, I would really want to study with Freddie. At the end of this session, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. But right now, let's dive into part one. Hello everyone, it's Freddie here from eBass Guitar, and I want to show you five plectrum bass lines that I think every bass player should learn. So before we get started, I think it's really essential that we debunk this myth that real bass players don't play with the plectrum. We all know that that is absolute nonsense, and really, any bass player worth their weight in gold will be able to serve the song that they're playing using the appropriate technique that complements the rest of the ensemble. So playing with a pick is something that I am particularly passionate about. And I've got five bass lines today that I feel are really worth you learning to level up your pick playing. So each line that we look at will get progressively more challenging, technically speaking. Each one will focus on a specific technique which will serve you in tackling the next one. So whether you're an expert or a total beginner, I think there's something in here for absolutely everyone. There are five absolutely killer bass lines to check out here. We've got Under Pressure by Queen, and that's gonna be looking at basic rhythm and getting comfortable with upstrokes and downstrokes. We've got Long View by Green Day, which is looking at pick direction discipline and adding a few double stops. We have 46 and 2 by Tool. This is focusing on articulation and tone. Parallel Universe by the Red Hot Chili Peppers, which is going to really help us build up our stamina. And lastly, we're going to put all of them together with Yes's Roundabout, which is one of my favorite bass lines of all time. So with plectrum playing, there's generally two ways that we tend to hold the pick. You can hold it using what's called open grip, which is where you hold it between the thumb and the first finger. Or you can do closed grip, which is usually where you hold it with the thumb, the first and the second finger, and you close the hand like this. Either technique is fine, it doesn't really matter whichever one is more comfortable. Just make sure that the motion is predominantly coming from the wrist like this, okay? And then eventually what we do is we refine it. It starts off like this, and then we learn to refine it like this. This is worth bearing in mind because we're gonna be looking at some unconventional picking a little bit later on. So the first song that we're gonna look at is Under Pressure by Queen. This is one of the most recognizable bass lines of all time. Here's how it goes. very cleverly utilizes a combination of upstrokes and downstrokes across the two middle strings of the bass guitar. And I think this is neat because the two middle strings are actually the easiest ones to get started on with plectrum playing. They're generally the most responsive. So we're in the key of D major and we've only actually got two notes in our line, D and A. So we play D up here on fret 12 of the D string and A fret 12 of the A string. Here's how it goes. One, and two, and a three, and that's how I'd suggest doing it. So down, 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 up, down, down. So if that's a little bit too tricky for you to do first time round, you can just do it with downstrokes and you can get rid of that little skip. So we can go, one and two and three and one and two and three and down 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 and then when you feel a bit more comfortable you can add it back in i highly recommend doing this line utilizing downstrokes or as many downstrokes as you possibly can the sound is generally a bit stronger so downstroke is this way upstroke is this way you hear there's a very slight weaker sound with the upstroke. So long view, this is an absolutely awesome line and it sounds really simple, but it's actually deceptively fiddly.
So that was Longview, really, really cool bassline played by the incredible Mike Durnt, who I think is a very overlooked bass player. Not only is his sound absolutely awesome, but his bass lines are generally a lot more fiddly and much more nuanced than you might imagine. Longview contains upstrokes, downstrokes, and another technique called double stops, which is where we play two notes at once. Not to be confused with a chord, which consists of three or more notes. Double stop is specifically two. It's worth mentioning at this point that the original recording of Longview is in E flat tuning. So I'm playing my precision bass and standard tuning just to make it a little easier for you lot to play along with me. But if you want to play along with Green Day, either shift the track upwards or tune your bass down. The way that we count the timing in this song is it's in 4-4, but rather than it being subdivided equally using eighth notes, one and two and three and four and, one and a two and a three and a four and a. So rather than one and two and three and four and, we're going one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, two, three, like this. So the very beginning of this line is like that under pressure bass line, but on steroids. We're using that alternative picking technique, but what we're doing is we're playing all of those subdivisions. We're going one and a two and a three and a four and a. We're playing all of those notes except the very last one on the D string. We're gonna take the D string, go to fret 14, and we slowly snake down it. One and a two and a three and a four and a. And then on the a, we go to an open A to give us a nice up stroke into the start of the main roof. It's quite hard to get this right, and I would not suggest that you make this the focus of your practice with this song. We want to get the main riff down. But if you like a challenge like I do, here's how it goes. One, two, three, so this main bass line revolves around two different chords. It focuses on the chord of E and then D. It may sound like we're in the key of E major. However, D major is not in the key of E major. We hear that first chord, and there's absolutely no dispute that it feels like home is, is there. That's absolutely our home, our home chord. However, D major has this weird G sharp note in it. Now, my ears are telling me this is not straight up E major. It's not E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, and E. I've got a D natural in there, okay? This means that my parent scale is actually gonna be A major. You'll find that A major actually contains all the notes that we play in this song. It's therefore in what you call E mixolydian. E still feels like home, but we're just replacing a couple of notes from the E major scale from A major. One, two, three, four, five, six. The seventh note is flattened. E mixolydian. We start with second finger on E, fourth finger on B, okay? Fret seven on the A string, fret nine on the D string. Then we go to fret seven and fret six on the D string. And then we throw in another E before changing chord. And the timing of this is like so. Okay, down, 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 up. Okay, and then we move down to D, which I'd suggest doing with the second finger. D, A, so fret five, fret seven on the D string, and then fret four to get that G sharp. And then we actually go back to D with the second finger and then play F sharp, which is fret four on the D. And I'd suggest doing this F sharp as an upstroke. Okay, the third bar is exactly the same, and then we've got these double stops, which is really cool. Like this. So, open D, and E, which is fret nine on the G string at the same time. Nine, seven, which is D, and then fret six, which is C sharp, and then back up to that octave D, fret seven on the G string, and then there's a tiny little flick of an open D in there before we complete the phrase. So it's gonna be like this. So that final D quarter note is what I call a reset note. 
It's where you throw in an open string to allow you to change position. It's not essential to catch this every single time or let it ring out as a full note, but it's quite a nice texture to be able to occasionally throw in. If it's a ghost note or if it's fully sounding, it really doesn't make that much difference at speed. But check it out. So I'll start with this position. You see, I can use that the open D to flick my way back to the E again. So yeah, this is a really cool bass line. Have lots of fun with it. And this will hopefully get you into the habit of playing bass lines using the same picking technique each time, which is going to be really important for the next line we look at. So song number three, 46 and two by Tool. I've chosen this song because the articulation is what really brings this song to life. And one thing that's worth bearing in mind about Tool's music in general is they tend to abandon this sort of verse chorus format in most of their music. This, this one is actually probably about as poppy as it gets. But um, what they usually do is they usually take a rhythmic idea and they usually move this around the different members of the band. So it will go onto the drums or it will go onto the guitar or whatever. And this main rhythm, the that's kind of recycled and reused and re-articulated throughout the song. You'll be able to hear this as I break it down. In terms of instruments, I'm using my Music Man Stingray. Uh, this is a five string, but I'm actually not going to use the fifth string. It's only because this track was originally recorded on a Stingray. And I'll, as I'll explain later, the sound is a really important part of this style of music. So drop D, he's, he's taken down to D. Okay, we get that really lovely kind of throaty sound. And the very first note that we're going to start with is actually open D on the D string. And we're going to go for an octave like this. And then we're going to go back to C, fret five on the G string, back up to D. And then we're going to play E flat, which is fret eight. And we're going to hammer on backwards or pull off backwards like this. And then making sure that, that D stays ringing open, we're going to play open D again. And we're going to play C and D, C and D again, and then, then B flat and C. So this D is being held underneath. It's what you call a pedal note. We do this three times. Last time. And then we have that E flat to D notion again, but I'm going to change fingering there. And I'm going to move the same shape up to fret 12 and 11. So we're going to go to G and F sharp. So final phrase. Like this. Making sure that that D stays ringing all the way throughout. So what the heck is going on with the harmony? We have... That's the notes that we have available to us. So one question you might be asking about the song is, what the heck is going on with the harmony? We've got this kind of D, E flat, F sharp, G going on. This sound, which you might have heard in lots of other styles of music, particularly in things like metal and rock. If I take the notes that are available to us, we have the following. We've got D, E flat, F sharp, G, A, B flat, C, and D. Now, I wouldn't usually incorporate flats and sharps in the same key, but bear with me here. If I take G harmonic minor, G, A, B flat, C, D, E flat, F sharp, G. The top four notes of that are the sort of starting notes of 46 and two. This harmonic landscape that we're navigating is actually a mode of the harmonic minor. We spend a lot of time talking about the modes of the major scale, but harmonic minor, melodic minor, Hungarian minor, all of these types of scales have different modes affiliated with them. This one is called Phrygian dominant because it's based off a dominant seventh, but it's got that Phrygian flat too. And it's absolutely great. It sounds particularly good when you play it nice and low with loads of overdrive. So that's your verse section wrapped up nicely. For the chorus section, 
what Justin Chancellor does is he reorchestrates and re-articulates the line. So previously for our verses, we've been doing this. We've been using our open D up here. Like this. He chucks everything down an octave because it's a chorus and the rest of the instrumentation kind of spreads out a bit more so. Now you can hear that that's starting to sound a little bit gross and a little bit muddy. I would suggest that we play this all on the open D string, which was previously our E string. You hear that I'm able to kind of really tame the articulation there. There's actually a tiny little gap of silence in there as well between the B flat up to C, which, which would have been C to D previously, fret eight to fret 10. Okay. I will also change patch as well. I'll move over from my chorus to my overdrive, which is sounds amp. I know Justin Chancellor likes using the guitar model of these. If you've got something that you're able to blend or buy amp, that's usually a good idea because you don't want to lose all the top end or all the bottom end. But I'll put my overdrive patch on. Have a listen to how great this sounds just with an open D. Right? And when I want to really dig in like this, I'm no longer kind of holding the plectrum like I usually would with a tiny bit of it poking out. I'm actually letting quite a lot of it poke out so that I can get a really big sound through it. Previously, I was playing that verse line. Kind of sort of in the, somewhere towards the neck or possibly in the middle. You can't play it back here. It just sounds a little bit harsh if you play too close to the bridge. But here, I'm going to be playing right through it and I'm kind of towards the back pickup. I'm sure the lav mic's picking up loads at the top end of that, but... So there are some really juicy double stops that follow this riff, and you'll have the notation below so that you can work it out. I'm not gonna spend ages explaining all the subdivisions and rhythmic subdivisions. My suggestion would be loop this and try clapping it to get it in time. But what you'll hear is that the guitar and the drums play something completely different to the bass. So this is about sticking to your guns, really. And it's exactly the same kind of thinking that we used with Longview earlier. Okay, I'm making sure that I'm really slamming it to get that drive to react to it. Because I'm on a five string, I'm just covering the B string up with my thumb. Because So it's not ringing out. And if I don't, then then you get that, which sounds pretty gross, to be honest. I'll just play those two sections through for you so you can have them in context. So the section that follows that chorus ends up using this really, really simple yet effective reharmonization technique. The riff is also kind of uh, melodically reduced, I would say. So rather than playing every single pitch, the rhythm is kept to this open D. And you'll, you'll agree that it's a really effective kind of writing. When I play that reharmonization, I tend to slide into it and I tend to put a bit of a wobble on it. But again, this is exactly the same frets that we've used for the chorus as well. So check this out. Let's have, let's have a listen. Back to the riff. So yeah, that final riff is exactly the same as the chorus. You just don't leave that gap between the B flat to C. So I'll play the whole thing through for you.
So there you have it. That's 46 and 2. Go and learn the whole song. It's an absolutely brilliant one to get under your fingers. So that's it for today. If you've enjoyed this lesson, at the beginning, I promised I would tell you how you could study with Freddie one on one. Freddie is one of our e bass guitar VIP coaches. If you'd like to find out more about our VIP program, all you need to do is head over to ebassguitar.com forward slash VIP. I'll put a link in the description below too, and you can apply it to study with Freddie there. That's it for now, guys. If you've enjoyed this lesson, please do head over to that link, and I will see you again very soon. Catch you later. Bye-bye.